Hollywood has no shortage of romantic entanglements of any kind, and no shortage of public interest in them. So, it was no different when Laura Flynn Boyle became embroiled in a messy love triangle with David Spade and Jack Nicholson in the late 1990s. Nicholson's womanizing reputation is nothing new, but Boyle might not be too far behind. There's a car crash, shameless actions on both sides, and more mess than any other couple can account for. Oh my god, I can't believe I did that! Laura Flynn Boyle was undeniably one of Hollywood's most prominent young stars in the early 90s, if not a primary it girl of the era. She had back-to-back -back breakout roles in two cultural phenomena of the decade, as troubled and inquisitive teen Donna Hayward on a mind-bending mystery Twin Peaks, and as Wayne's desperate ex-girlfriend Stacy in the big screen version of the Saturday Night Live sketch Wayne's World. Adept at both drama and comedy, it didn't hurt that she looked like a femme fatale straight out of a 1940s classic Hollywood thriller. As a young starlet with the world's attention, Laura certainly had her pick of romantic partners. The actor landed a string of famous boyfriends, including Eric Dane from Grey's Anatomy and Counting Crows lead singer Adam Duritz. As for Nicholson, Hollywood has seen its fair share of ladies' men over the decades, though few can match up to the three-time Academy Award winner when it comes to womanizing. Even by Hollywood standards, he's on another level. While Boyle and Nicholson don't publicly talk about the situation, David Spade has been open about the love triangle that has forever bound them. Laura began dating David Spade after ending her two-year marriage to John Patrick D. III in 1998. The two were happily together when she was involved in a car crash with, yes, Jack Nicholson in June 1999. Boyle reportedly exited Nicholson's Mercedes-Benz through the sunroof, screaming, I have a boyfriend, I can't be here. The romance between Boyle and Nicholson didn't exactly come out of nowhere. Before the accident, Nicholson swooped in and hit on Boyle with Spade standing right next to her. Spade said the three of them were smoking a dube somewhere when the legendary actor straight up asked her out. Wow, the man is full of respect for their relationship. When Spade didn't jump to defend their romance to Nicholson, quote, she got mad because I didn't stick up for her. But Spade said he had his reasons. But first of all, I go, are you gonna go out with him? I don't know. And plus, he outranks me. He's cooler, he's richer, he's better looking. Like, I, I get how it works. It's okay. You're gonna do what you're gonna do. I can't. And she goes, dude, he's worse than Trump. He's gross. I would never. And I go, okay. The actor didn't think much of the interaction until he got a call from the National Enquirer asking for a comment on the car crash situation. That's how I found out, he admitted. She and I didn't talk too much after that. As for Nicholson and Boyle, they were in a high-profile relationship until April 2001, when she broke up with him. Jack was more into the relationship than she was, and after a year together, she wants to date other people, a friend of Boyle's said at the time. It wasn't the first time Laura's romantic entanglements ended up gaining that level of attention. Earlier in the decade, her love life even got in the way of her work when Boyle was in a headline-grabbing relationship with Kyle MacLachlan. Everyone deserves love and affection, surely. However, when pursuing relationships makes the production of a film or TV series more difficult for the people putting it all together, that might have certain consequences. During the filming of her first major project, Twin Peaks, Boyle dated her co-star, Kyle MacLachlan. While they were sharing the screen, their relationship reportedly altered the outcome of the show. At least that's the version shared by Cheryl and Fenn, who played the trouble-seeking Audrey Horn. In a 2014 interview with the AV Club, Fenn confirmed that Horn was initially supposed to engage in a romantic relationship with FBI agent Dale Cooper, played by McLaughlin. Laura was dating Kyle, and she was mad that my character was getting more attention, she said. Soon after, McLaughlin began to argue that Horn was too young to date agent Cooper, and it wouldn't look good, Fenn claimed. Literally, because of that, they brought in Heather Graham, who's younger than I am, for him, and Billy Zane for me. I was not happy about it. It was stupid, she said. Sherilyn wasn't the first one to suggest jealousy had been involved in the decision not to pair up two of the characters. Without naming names, Twin Peaks co-creator Mark Frost said the situation was a curveball that saw them having to pull a rabbit out of the hat, speaking out back in May 2011. Somebody in the cast was involved with somebody else, and that somebody else was not overly thrilled with the idea of the somebody else having love scenes with a third somebody else, Frost said. Then, in January 2006, a representative for Harrison Ford confirmed that the actor had separated from his wife of 17 years, screenwriter Melissa Matheson. 
Around the same time, the National Enquirer posted photos of Ford and Boyle allegedly spending some time together in a New York nightclub after the Vogue Fashion Awards. Ford's agent claimed that the actor and his wife had split before the Boyle encounter, while she said nothing romantic had happened with Ford. That was so blown out of proportion. I sat down in a booth with Harrison Ford at a party and talked to him for five minutes. Nevertheless, the damage was done to Laura's already increasingly poor reputation and perhaps to her career prospects. People really think I'm a homewrecker, Boyle said, that I'm difficult, that I'm crazy. In a rare interview with The Hollywood Reporter in June 2021, Laura said she stays away from social media and the internet in general, still opting for an old phone instead of a smart one that can look up where you are or where you're going. However, she doesn't complain about the paparazzi. It simply comes with the territory, she said. They're like mosquitoes, but I chose this profession. I would be a total jerk if I complained about it. If I'm going to take the paycheck, I'm also going to take the bad publicity. It's going to happen, she admitted. Nicholson's reputation, however, was never really hurt by tons of romances and flings. When The Independent compiled a list of the great seducers in history, his name appeared alongside the likes of Lord Byron and Casanova. That may be a stretch, but if reports are to be believed, the actor has more than earned his place in history. He's said to have slept with over 2,000 women. This figure has never been verified. When Nicholson was asked to confirm it, he replied, I don't count. But first-hand accounts from the people who have known him personally over the years indicate that the number is indeed very high. Sure things, as long as nobody gets hurt. The thing about Jack is that he likes women more than any man I've ever known. Nicholson's The Witches of Eastwick co-star Cher said, While Kim Basinger described the actor as the most highly sexed individual I have ever met, and he didn't slow down, even though the Oscar winner gave an interview several years back announcing his retirement from the flirtation game. There were points in my life when I felt oddly irresistible to women, Nicholson said. I'm not in that state now, which makes me sad. I would love that one last romance, a real romance, but I'm not very realistic about it happening. However, those sentiments didn't keep the actor from trying when he shamelessly flirted with Jennifer Lawrence, 50 years his junior, on camera at the 2013 Oscars. Nicholson popped up out of nowhere as Lawrence was just beginning an interview backstage. You did such a beautiful job. I didn't mean to cross into your interview, but I had to congratulate you, Nicholson told a starstruck Lawrence. You're being really rude, the actor who had just taken home the award for her role in Silver Linings Playbook joked. As Nicholson walked away, Lawrence put her hands in her face and said, <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Is he still here? I'll be waiting. Oh my god! <laughs> it turns out that when he told her, I'll be waiting, he wasn't kidding. The actor has continued waiting for Jennifer and sent her gifts along the way. He sent me some flowers and a bottle of crystal and a note that said, Missing you already, Lawrence said. Not to brag. According to Lawrence, the pair haven't spoken since that fateful night, who later regretted spilling the beans. I'm, I should have probably like kept that a secret so it could just be between me and Jack. There's certainly nothing wrong with keeping an active romantic life as long as there's communication and trust. And you don't ruin a movie or a TV production in the process. That's all we have for you today, juicers. As always, thanks for choosing us. Spread the word and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for more celebrity stories. And we'll be right back. Be well and be kind.